Hi guys, so we're going to be going into growing a community for your crowdfunding uh, project. Um, a little bit about us first. We are um, Richard and Kay, and we are from Paper of Gold, um, an agency that helps makers, startups, product designers, lovely guys like you, um, launch new projects and ideas into the world. Um, we do this by, by helping you find your audience, build a community around your audience, and we also help build your brand. Um, we're based in London, Glasgow, and Barcelona. Um, and actually, how Kay and I met was at Mint Digital, another agency, where we launched you know many different digital physical projects, um, some of which were on Kickstarter. So some of them. Back in 2012, I put my face on this little cardboard person. <laughs> um, you could, it was called Fog with Me. You could go onto the website and create someone, a uh, little cardboard person that looked like you or your friends as just like an alternative to uh, uh, a greeting card. So we put that on Kickstarter and got that su successfully funded. Um, <coughs> another project at uh, Mint was Projectio, which was a tiny Instagram projector. Um, we later got that into the MoMA in New York. Um, selling in through, through their gift shops as well. Um, and then I left Mint um, and joined another agency called Made by Many, where we made Hackable, which was a computer you could throw. Um, that raised almost uh, a quarter of a million. Um, then Kay and I joined forces again um, at Paper Gold and worked with Technology Will Save Us on their Mover Kit campaign. Um, and then later, also last year, we launched uh, a Patreon. Um, project, which is another crowdfunding platform. Um, this was for MakeWorks, which are a factory finding um, platform based up in, in Scotland. And also we worked with the guys at Ding um, on their smart doorbell, which um, was supported by John Lewis and also Design Council. Um, and last year we also worked on Susie Snooze from Bleep Bleeps. Um, this was their second Kickstarter campaign. Um, and we'll be launching another one with them later this year as well for their third product. So a little intro into um, crowdfunding before we begin. We're mostly going to be talking about um, reward-based crowdfunding today. Um, so getting into Kickstarter and Indiegogo, but there's also Patreon, which is more ongoing income um, crowdfunding. And then there's also CrowdCube and Cedars if you're um, looking at equity crowdfunding and then charitable crowdfunders, GoFundMe, and just giving as well. Um, so yeah, where backing comes from um, is a good place to start. Um, so obviously your community, the people you meet, your personal network are going to be key to getting things going. But then you're going to have to amplify your message with press and influencers, getting them on board to share your story. Um, the crowdfunding platform you use yourself will have a community on there that will see your projects and want to back it. And then also paid advertising on things like Facebook and Instagram as well to help, help you reach more people. We'll be focusing on the top three um, today. Um, so yeah, things to do, you can, things to do before launch. Um, understand who your target audience are. Learn how to pitch your project to that audience. Um, and also grow your social media following and mailing lists before you even launch your campaign. Um, and bring everyone that you meet throughout all these phases along on the journey with you. They, these guys are key to, to sharing your project early on. Um, so first off, yeah, finding your target audience. Um, understand who they are, what their interests are, um, what platforms they're likely to use, um, what, their sto what stories they're, sh they're, they're already sharing, um, who influences them in terms of like celebs and bloggers. Um, but sometimes actually, um, with some projects that are quite innovative, there's nothing else really out there um, that you can um, reference. So you might look at other things that maybe sh just share some values, um, some brand values that you do, um, and use them as an inspiration point to kind of understand your audience as well, um, see what they're sharing, what they're talking about, what resonates with their audiences as, as a stepping point into, into that. And then once you've built all that information, you kind of collate it into um, your target audience, build personas around it, go into um, what things are interested in, they're interested in, what publications they read, what they like, what their ambitions are, um, to help you build up an idea of who your audience are and who you're going to be pitching to. And also, you know, validate your products before by just going out there and sharing your idea. Um, 
And if you, of course, if you have a working prototype, you can test it with your users. So with Hackable, we obviously tested it with kids, watched how they played with it. Um, and you know, important part of this process actually is to take photographs and document this whole process as well, um, take videos, because later on, this is great stuff to use as part of your campaign to help tell your story. Um, you can take little quotes of endorsement from the kids and parents that you meet and teachers as well. Um, then also gather feedback from your audience. So with Hackable, the kids are the users, but the audience are the parents. These are the ones that are on Kickstarter making the purchase decision to actually want to buy your product. So talk to them. Um, and one of the key things we actually found with um, the parents were they were really scared of buying a new toy for their kids that they would just play with for a few hours and then just be tossed on top of what they call the plastic pile. Um, so as part of the campaign, we really made sure that the idea of longevity of the product, um, the, the hackable being able to have different levels and developing over time and growing with your child, um, including that in the pitch really helps as well as sell the product. Cool, so I'm going to pass over to Kelly, who's going to talk about how you do it. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, all this stuff is, is, um, is really great. You're kind of like, yes, okay, I'm going to build my community, but how do you do it? You know, it's, it feels really like a big task. Um, so we start with stories um, every time we think about, you know, your target audience. We never um, say, oh, you have to do in be on Instagram, you have to be on Facebook. We're completely platform agnostic. Um, we look at what's best for your audience, where they are already, and build stories from there. Um, with Bleep Bleeps, they, we were able to create loads of kind of amazing content with them. Um, we looked at their core audience and we realised that they were design, um, very design aware parents who um, had very little time but still wanted to kind of be up to date with the news and things that were happening in the design world. So we created the loop um, where we curate loads of content from the internet. Something really simple, you know, just content curation, finding things that they'll like, putting it all in one place. We also created five minutes of, which was really, really like acknowledging the fact that they didn't have very much time and creating like, so that was five minutes of old school text, the example here, but we also had like five minutes of orange because Susie was orange and it was all about kind of sunshine and bright colors. And we had five minutes of snooze and kind of all the things that kind of embody the products and the brand um, into curated content, which is simple and easy to do. Um, and we use that for the newsletters. So everything comes back to the blog, regardless of whether you use newsletters, Instagram, Twitter, everything leads back to the website. So people are on there, they're interested, they can sign up to the mailing list, so it means that you've got their contact details. Um, another really great thing to do with the blog is to kind of take that time, so you've got your kind of key persona, and go out and find people who influence them. So for instance, this is Matas. He is also a toy designer. He um, runs a company in Berlin, and he's a father of two daughters. So we went and we interviewed him just about his life. It was just about, what, do you, what does a day in the life look like for you? How do you get the kids out? It's kind of acknowledging the fact that parents have two, two like, lives. They've got their like, being a parent, but then also they've got like, their work and their passion. And we got them to talk about these two different things. Um, and what was great about that is while you're kind of developing your product and your brand, it's very difficult to get people to talk about something that they don't know much about, especially if you've not even got your product out into the world. So with this, we had a piece of content. He kindly gave us the time to interview, and we also interviewed Sean Keevney from Six Music and other creative parents. Um, but this gave him something that he could put out into the world. He could tweet it from his um, large social following and it just became something that was quite a, a, an easy thing to do um, the only thing is just getting people to answer your emails but like, that's then so when you launch your campaign further down the line they'll remember you and it's like get them to re, um, retweet that interview and you just you know build up the community that way we also created um, so everyone here don't know life hacks right and you know how in life hacks the photography is always kind of awful. It's always like really grainy and dark and well bleep bleeps is not grainy and dark, bleep bleeps is bright, colourful and bold. So what we did was we took kind of traditional uh, life hacks and turned them into parenting hacks and we reshot them all. We took really bright coloured photography um, and then we worked, so these lived as blog posts initially but then what we did is we worked with Anorak magazine who make kids magazines who um, illustrated this and we turned it into a PDF so that people could um, sign up. We could use this as um, 
a landing page to direct people to when they were looking at Facebook ads. Um, and it would be like sign up for like simple, simple hacks to make parenting easier. And it was um, a really lovely thing to do. So in, in exchange for an email address, they got like a really lovely packaged PDF. Um, and the other really, really important thing about all this is telling your story, um, celebrating your team. This is the lovely tip we'll save the team. Um, celebrating the team, celebrating the partner, celebrating the people that are making your business possible. Um, it's all about humans um, for us. <laughs> it's not just about the product, it's all about humans. Um, so I think that's really, really important. Um, it's what kind of brings people along with you. C coming to events like this, really important. You know, either just attending, exhibiting, showing a prototype, you know, and, and as Heather said, like have a landing page set up. Like all you need to do is set up a Squarespace, have like enough of a brand there that people have something to, to go to, to put in their um, email addresses <coughs> if they're interested. But like, I think that's one of the biggest things is like gather those emails um, and apply for talks. It's so scary to do. Believe me, I know. <laughs> but I think like it's like getting used to pitching your product and getting used to kind of like, the more you talk about it, the, the shorter and more concise you can get, and you start to get a feel for what to put in the video. Um, so all this is really useful. And by the way, we haven't even reached the Kickstarter campaign yet. This is We tend to work like 10 weeks out at least from launch. So this is all stuff that you can do in the run-up. Um, your personal network. You have been get like, like, so, like I said, 10 weeks. Your personal network, you've been developing this for years. For years and years and years, you know, it's like you don't know who your uncle knows. You don't know who your friend from around the corner from years ago knows. Like, contact them. Tell them about your project. The fact that you've got all this content already existing gives them another reason to share it. It's not just about the product. Um, so it really is a really strong tool. Um, and so, yeah, reach out to everyone you've ever met and let them know about it. Um, but why is it so important to build a community? Um, Really, what you're doing is you're in asking people to invest in you. You're asking people to trust that you're going to deliver a product at the end of it that they've given your money for. So if you can build up a good reputation and have trust with people, um, it makes it so much easier. Um, it makes growing awareness easier, but also having more voices during your project just helps you reach your goals. So for instance, you know, there's always the, the dead period that we call it in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign. But if everyone is clamoring and shouting for you, like it just makes it so much easier to restart it again. Um, okay, so how do you even go wider than that? So you've talked to everyone you know, you've created loads of lovely content, now what? So we work a lot with influencers. Now influencers doesn't have to be, um, well for Bleep Bleeps it doesn't have to be painting bloggers. It doesn't have to be um, someone with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers. It can be loads of different things. So for instance, an influencer for Bleep Bleeps was uh, Professor Colin Espy. Colin Espy is a professor of sleep. So what that does with um, parents is it reassures them that, yes, we have created a device to help your kids get to sleep, but we've got technical knowledge. We have the backing of a, a trusted professor in it, and we were able to then use his video on the Kickstarter page. And we can use the quotes from the experts and the target audience to um, put in your press release as well. Um, so this little blue thing in the middle, is a quote from a happy mum who has used Susie. So we're able to just kind of pull that out as a little testimonial. But then at the top here, we also, we only had one working prototype for the campaign. So it's very difficult to get that out in front of people. So what we did is we gathered loads of mums together with their kids and just made a video with them talking about like the problems that they experience commonly. Um, you know, sleep always comes up, number one. It's so hard to get kids to sleep. But we got them to kind of sit around, talk about Susie, talk about why it was useful to have a product like that exist. Um, it's something you can do, I mean, like we did with Hackable, it's just, um, just something you can do to quickly validate a reason for it to exist as well. So social proof is really important. Um, and then there's press. Uh, as Heather also said, um, like, new, like your, your product story is not news in itself. The fact that you're doing a Kickstarter. When we started doing them in 2012, that was news. That made it really easy. So when we did Projectio, we were like, hey, we're doing a Kickstarter. And then everyone would write about it. It was really great. We missed those times. But now it's not like that. You know, you've got to create stories. You've got to be really clear about why you made your product. You know, focus on your three main things, like the reason for it to exist, how you're going to use it, and then the audience that it's for. 
And don't just email editors at. So we always try and find someone who's written a similar story about a similar product. They've shown an interest in this sort of thing before. And then these little quotes here are able to be used on your Kickstarter page. More validation that it exists, that it's real, that you're going to deliver. And then um, this is lovely John from Ding. He was super happy that we got him in Stuff magazine. <laughs> um, but why is it important for press? Like, so yes, it adds credibility, but it also really drives backers. It drives traffic. Um, and also for future connections. When we deliver any project, we don't, we're not in it for 30 days. We want this product to exist for you for the next 10 years. This is, this is like a brand that you're creating. So that you know, you've got your future connections now with press who already bought into what you're doing. Um, but also a huge one that should not be overlooked is the fact that when we use Kickstarter, we have a huge audience and community who want to be involved, who want to know more, and also Kickstarter is really awesome at supporting projects. Um, you can get little button projects we love on your campaign if you can kind of just tell your story really well. Get it in front of them. I can't say this in front of Heather. Like, get your story in front of them. Um, like, get their buy-in. Like, Kickstarter are people too. You know, they've all got interests and, and um, a lot of their newsletters are editorially led. So, you know, if you can give them a reason to talk about your project, then, you know, it's, you're, they're going to put you out in front of loads of people. So there's Projects We Love, which is a newsletter. And there's also um, the different, yes, yeah, so there's actually different things you can sign up now. Um, so before it was just like one newsletter, but now you can sign up to specific interests, so Kickstarter Invent, um, there's one for art, there's one for theatre, so it means that you're actually getting straight to the people who've signed up for those specific projects. So you're getting right into your, your core audience. Um, and then they also have like happening, so these are kind of very linky, loads, loads of different projects in one mm -hmm. newsletter. So there's loads of different things with newsletters that you can use, and then there's project of the day, it makes you featured in your design category or in your own category. So Kickstarter itself is really powerful for driving backers, but all of this doesn't come without doing all that work before and telling your story and getting your brand across. Um, I think it's just really important. And then I'll oh, hand back to Richard. Yeah, so after Kickstarter, when you're successfully funded, you're punching the air, you reach your goal. Um, it doesn't stop there. You can, you've got future contacts for, 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 uh, for press. Um, you've got validation that you can then take to investors um, to get even more money. Um, you can get feedback from your community whilst you're still um, making the product. Um, and there's also people that will get in touch with opportunities for collaborations, people that want to partner with you as well. Um, so in summary, understand who you're, who you're going to make it for, uh, build a good reputation, bring everyone on that journey with you, um, keep your community engaged, um, and amplify your story with press and influencers. Um, cool, that's all.